Again, welcome to Introduction to Health Informatics, HA135 course. In this lecture, we're going to cover chapter two of our course textbook, which is uh, Health Information Management Professionals. So our main objective is to differentiate among health information management career opportunities. Also, we're going to identify professional associations that is available to healthcare professionals. Also, we're going to name the benefits of completing an academic professional practice experience. So first we start with cancer registrar. In health informatics profession, a cancer registrar normally collects cancer data from a variety of sources and also report cancer statistics to government and healthcare agencies. Example will be a state cancer registry's office. And their primary responsibility is to ensure the timely, accurate, and complete collection and maintenance of cancer data. So again, a cancer registrar uh, must have knowledge in statistics and also data analysis. The accurate collection, analysis, maintenance of cancer data. And here we say the cancer registrar also enters information into a computer database, either manually or through a database linkages and computer interfaces. So as a cancer registrar, training may be based on college management programs, also a background in computer science. Uh, credentials will be a certified tumor registrar. Employment opportunities uh, can be in a hospital or a cancer registry, consulting firms. Here yeah, we say private or government agencies also. The next will be the coding and reimbursement specialists. And normally, coding and reimbursement specialists assign code either alphabetically or numbers to diagnosis and services procedures based on patient record documentation. And this code also will be used to charge insurance companies. So uh, coding and reimbursement specialists will acquire a working knowledge of CPT, which is the current procedural terminology and also ICD-10 CM. And nowadays, again, the ICD-10 is a computerized system, it's a digital information. Previous years back, there is a, a book that normally consists of all the code, diagnostic codes, and also insurance reimbursement and procedure using ICD. Again, the 10 is the version of it. So here we say it's international classification of disease, the 10th revision, clinical modification or ICD-10-PCS. Now their training will be based on college education, a four years college education in healthcare administration or management field is enough. The professional associations is American Academy of Professional Coders, also American College of Medical Coding Specialists, and American Health Information Management Association. Employment opportunities normally in the hospitals or government agencies. Also, there's internet-based application service providers. And some hospitals or consulting firms, again, uh, use coders or the coding and reimbursement specialists in online freelancing uh, contract work. The next career is the chief information officer. Uh, chief information officer, again, is one of the position that is almost required in any business organization, either in engineering, in medical field, uh, retailing, marketing, etc. And normally as a chief information officer, they are responsible for the overall technological direction of an organization. 
and it's increasingly become part of executive team. So as we know at this present age of uh, medical field and healthcare driven system, we are using a lot of technology. So a chief information officer will play a very vital role. So to perform effectively, the chief information officer must have a knowledgeable about the workings of the total organization. Also, they propose budget for projects and programs. They also make decisions about staff training, also equipment purchases, mostly information technology or IT equipment, both hardware, software, and also hire and assign computer specialists, information technology workers, support personnel to carry out information technology related projects. So chief information officers also provide organizations with a vision to master information technology as a competitive tool. And the training will be a college base and normally it can be as a management information technology or system major. And some also can have an MBA that's a master's in business administration with concentration on corporate information system or management information system. And there's a credential which is certified manager. Employment will be in a different setting. So again, here we are talking about medical field. So either in the hospital, normally it should be a large organization. A small clinic, maybe with less than five, 10 doctors and less than 20 staff most likely will not have a CIO. But chief information officer again is an executive uh, position which require a lot of funds. We also have a chief knowledge officer, which is not too common, mostly in a big organization, a very large hospital or so medical facility teaching hospital, we may have chief knowledge officer. So in healthcare, a chief knowledge officer normally will lead the development, management and sharing of knowledge. Uh, so you don't have to be only the IT information technology but it can be a general knowledge process or intellectuals of the companies uh, or the organizations and business operations. In this case, within the healthcare organization, for the purpose of improving patient care and also the hospitals or the medical facilities day-to-day -day operations. So a chief knowledge officer must manage the organization's intellectual capital and also serve as the custodian of knowledge management practices within the organization. And also the chief knowledge officer serves a broader role in an organization than those the chief information officer. So as you know, chief information officer, CIO, will focus on IT, information technology mostly the physical computer, the network access, the softwares. But as a knowledge office, chief knowledge officer, it's more focused on broader role in the organization in terms of the IT and also in terms of different business operations, uh, different departments with different tax and different uh, knowledge or intellectuals. So here we say the chief knowledge officer can assist the organizations in maximizing the returns on investment in knowledge. So example of a knowledge can be the people, processing, intellectual capitals, et cetera. Also it will explore the intangible assets such as customer relationships, facilitate repeat successes, share the best practices, improve innovation in the organization and also prevent knowledge loss after organizational researcher. So again, by looking at this, we can see that chief knowledge information plays a vital role and also their role is very broader within the organization comparing to chief information officer which focus solely on the information technologies. 
So the training also will be a college base. Credential is currently, no, currently there's no specific credential for CKO. Employment will be variety of settings and mostly will be a very big organization, either an hospital or a biological lab, medical lab, et cetera, where it have to be a very big organizations. We also have the health information manager. So here we say that each time patient receive health care, a record is generated to document the patient's current symptoms, also the medical history, result of examinations, treatment that were rendered along with outcomes, and uh, can be the lab report, result, diagnosis, plans for treatment. So this patient data must be organized, analyzed, and also maintained by health information managers that will ensure the delivery of quality health care. The training also is a college base. Uh, as a health information manager, and their main concentration or major can be health informatics or health administration, health care administration, um, or it can even be MBA with concentration on health care information system or medical information system. So there's two credentials from two organizations. We have the registered health information technician and also registered health information administrator. Employment opportunity can be in the clinic, consulting firms, government agencies, insurance companies, hospitals, nursing facilities, home health agencies, etc., or physician's office. Uh, as a health information manager, um, the main skill again will be IT, information technology, must have a skill in using computers and be able to manage data, input data, at least have some knowledge in a database system. The next is a certified health data analysis. So as a certified health data analysis, uh, I can, the main objective will be analyzing clinical data. And sometimes can be a biological data. Now the difference between clinical data and biological data is that a biological data can be uh, genetic data such as DNA or protein or RNA data. So this means we are analyzing, this normally is based on computational biology. And, or bioinformatics. Uh, we analyze DNA to find the function of the genes or to diagnose a patient. Uh, but a certified health data analysis will focus more again in the clinical data, that is the symptoms, uh, patient's uh, information. So here yeah, we say over the last five years, the healthcare industry has seen an increase in the need for professionals who possess the required knowledge and expertise in health informatics. So AHIMA offers a credential for professionals to be credentials as a certified professionals in health informatics. This exams again, test the knowledge of expertise to support and utilize health informatics. So the exams domain include data analysis and utilization data reporting, data management, privacy and security, management of health information system process, database management, health informatics training, and also project management. To sit the exams, candidate must at least meet one of the following eligibility requirements. Uh, must have a bachelor degree and two years of health informatics experience. Bachelor degree should be typically major in health informatics or healthcare administrations or anything that can be dealt with a data analysis also. So if with master's degree, we need only one year of health informatics experience. So the training again will be based on college, 
either four years college degree or a master's degree. There's a professional association with certified health data analysis, which is the American Health Information Management Association. And this organization also uh, certify a lot of uh, health information uh, or health informatics uh, majors, college degrees in ma major universities. So we have the certified health data analysis as the certification. Also the employment opportunity will be a different settings. Uh, it can be in a hospital, clinic, uh, any organization that again, have a clinical data or health data that need to be analyzed. Now there's a difference between certified health data analysis and epidemiologists. Epidem epidemiologists also is doing data analysis, but the main goal of epidemiologists, they are using a data that have to deal with an outbreak or a pandemic or a, a epidemic, uh, in any outbreak of a virus, a disease, etc., in a community setting. So epidem epidemiology deal with the public health. Public health deal with, again, a community uh, uh, health issues. Uh, health data analysis will be dealing with medical, so individual health issues instead of a community data set. Also, we have a certified documentation improvement practitioner. And their training also is based on college degree, at least four years college degree. Professional association also is the AHIMA. Credential is a certified documentation improvement practitioner. And promet can be in the different settings or various settings. Also, we have certified in healthcare, privacy, and security. Again, since we know information technology, again, deal with a lot of information. Uh, we have to make sure this data, especially patients, medical or clinical data are safe, the security, and also privacy. Uh, so the training also is a college base. They are professional also is AHIMA, credential is certified in healthcare, privacy, and security. And promote opportunity to be a different settings in medical organizations. So certified in healthcare, privacy, and security, their main job or main role is securing security and privacy of healthcare information or data set of patients. We also have certified care technology specialists. Also their training is professional exams. Uh, you don't have to have a college degree. Also the organization is AHIMA. So healthcare technology specialist falls under health informatics. And promet can be in the different settings in medical, organiz medical organizations. It can be in a lab, medical lab, or hospital, et cetera. And the main goal is, as we all know, we are using a lot of technology in medical delivery or even medical services to patients, either in the surgery, uh, S3, even dental clinic. We now have a lot of applications that can be used by dentists. Uh, everything is digitized, computerized. So the main objective of an healthcare technology specialist is again, this organization you are is, is working, to make sure the technologies that are being used, they are in again, maintain, uh, they are in order maintenance of it. Uh, so here we say that AHI, MA also offer credential of professionals to be credentialed as a certified professional in health informatics. And that is the main goal of this course. Again, certified professional in health informatics. Nowadays, we have nurses that also have 
a minor or a license as a health informatics. And as we know, many years back, as a nurse, everything is done manually. Data is entered manually in the folder files. Today, nurses use computers. Even some nurses have a special mobile devices that they use to input their data and also get information from them. So in terms of health informatics, we we'll get more knowledge on how to, again, apply computer applications in Nessie day-to-day task. So in order for any health professional to take these exams, you must have a knowledge of data analysis and utilization of data. Mm -hmm. Also data reporting, data management, privacy and security, management of health information system and process, database management, health informatics training, and also project management. So this field again required a lot of information technology and data analysis skills. Now to sit for this exam, candidate must meet one of the eligibility requirements, a bachelor degree with two years experience in health informatics or master's degree with only one year experience. Also, we have the certified professional in health informatics and they are training professional exam. The association also is AHIMA. Employment is again different settings and medical organizations. We also have health insurance specialists. So health insurance specialists or claim examiner review the health related claims to determine whether the costs are reasonable and also medically necessary based on the patient diagnosis. So this process again involves verification of the claim against the third party payer guidelines to authorize appropriate payment or refer to the claim to an investigator for more tolerant review. So as a health information manager can also perform a medical billing, coding, record keeping and other medical office administration duties. So a training will be a college or vocational school or on the job training. Professional association is the AMBA, which is the American Medical Billing Associations, International Claims Associations, Medical Association of Billers. And a primary setting can be in a hospital, but major employment will be in insurance companies. So they are more or less like investigators of insurance claims. And we have also have health service man managers and they normally plan, direct and coordinate and supervise the delivery of health care. This can include the specialists who direct the clinical departments or services also manage an entire facility or a system. The training again will be based on college level, credentials are certified nursing home administrator, a permanent opportunity can be in a hospital clinic or nursing home at patient care settings. And the main job of a health services manager is again, they are required to improve the healthcare efficiency and qualities in the facility, in the healthcare facilities. And we also have a medical assistant, and they normally perform a routine administration jobs and clinical tasks to keep the office and clinics of physicians, uh, chiropractors, often, and even dentists, optometrists, etc. Medical assistants are very common, mostly in the fishes, even a very small clinic with only one or two physicians. They may need a medical assistance that will assist the physicians in the process of clinical tasks or administration job uh, of patient admission, or et cetera. So it can be a college base. Also the employment can be a physician office or clinics. 
And also it can be in the hospitals, either private or public hospitals, nursing home, residential care facility, because most medical ass assistants, they do both administrative job and also clinical tasks assisting nurses or medical doctors. We also have the medical transcriptionists. And they normally transcribe the pre-recorded dictation, creating a medical reports. Example would be the history, physical discharge summary. Their training is a post-secondary education, credential is registered medical transcriptionist or certified medical transcriptionist. Employment opportunity can be in a clinic, hospital, uh, physician offices, or it can also be a home base whereby uh, majority are home base and they normally work as a consultant or freelancer in, in, for a physician or even for an hospital. So hospital may send a pre-recorded dictation and they may transcribe it. So that this work can be done at anywhere at home as a consulting or freelancer. So next we go to the professional practice experience. So here we see a professional practice experience also called a PPE or internship or externship. It's a benefit for both students and facility that accept the student for placement. So this is normally a practice where a student, undergrad student, the final year, they may take an internship. It can be a, a paid or non-paid, but the main goal is for a student to receive on the job experience. There are some profession, or I will say there are some majors that in the medical field that even before you start working, you must have some hours of uh, on the job experience. Even some vocational school, let's say a licensed practical nurse, maybe they may require 300 hours on the job experience before you can even take or get your certification or your degree or diploma. So students receive on the job experience prior to the graduation, which can be one of the requirements, which again, assist them in obtaining a permanent employment. And also facility have the opportunity to participate in and improve the formal education process. Especially in the medical field, um, we want to train students more or less as on the job, as the job performs. As in the medical hospital, the procedures every time is updated. And because of technology, things are again uh, dynamic, things change. Technology changes, improvement of healthcare. So if we have a, a, a college degree program in a college for 20 years, and the design of the program hasn't changed, most likely to not reflect to the current practices in the hospital or clinic settings. So preparing for a professional practice, here they say we should try to provide the maximum benefit to students. Uh, so to provide the maximum benefit to students, professional practices are non-paid work experience that are arranged by the academic program faculty. And students also are usually told about the professional practice requirement in their first semester of studies and information about the possible practice site may be obtained at that time or during the later semester. Now, American Academy of Professional Coders, these are some organizations and as a student, especially a graduate student, it will be nice and beneficial to join any of this organization and we shall see some of the benefits. So as a coding certification by AAPC, which is American Academy of Professional Coders, we have a certified professional coder, certified professional coder hospital, certified professional coder apprentice and certified professional coder hospitals slash apprentice and then certified professional coders payer. Now, American College of Medical Coding Specialists also have the certification for coding specialists for payers and facility coding specialists and also professional coding specialists. 
and American Health Information Management Association have the Certified Coding Associate, Certified Coding Specialist, Certified Coding Specialist Physicians Base. And one thing about certification is that even if you have a college degree, it's nice also to have the certification because that can make you more marketable and get more opportunities. So these are other career opportunities also as a consultant. So as health informatics, you can work as a consultant or medical office manager, medical staff coordinator, privacy officer, quality manager, risk manager, utilization manager, and vendor sales person. Now, professional practice experience, yet we need to prepare for the professional practice. Example, while you are in the school, make sure that we use our career office, uh, creating a professional resume, and also student responsibilities, and they should be aware of it, that. And also the code of ethics, the professional code of ethics, which is very important. Now, how do you join the professional association? Again, you normally can join it through your school department information. Sometimes a faculty member who's teaching a specific class can explain about the information about it. And also most information is online. And the good thing also is that students normally pay a discounted fee. Joining professional association, most likely you need to pay some money because there's some benefits. For example, you may have access to publications for free online, and website access, and some professional association if you have a library with uh, information and textbooks pertaining to uh, the, the major or the, the, field, the professional field. Networking too, again, you meet a lot of members in your, who have the same or who are interested in having in the same career as you same profession so reduce certification exam fees also if the professionals most professional associations also are the ones who conduct uh, certifications uh, examinations uh, there's a chance of getting a scholarships and also a grants so that will be the conclusion of our chapter two course textbook lectures which again this chapter focuses on health informatics and careers, different careers in health informatics, the benefits and skills we need and different types of certification. So I will see you in chapter three lectures in our next class. So again, thank you. If you have a question, feel free to send an email or you can reach me at my number given in the syllabus. Thank you.